What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Lose Your Ass Podcast. Got a super fun show tonight. We're going to be joined by Caden Johnson of the BC Lions, newly drafted. Round seven, pick number 58 Yes, a running back. Out of York. Uh, yeah, so he is a running back out of York, but he's more than just a running back. He is also an amazing track star as a hurdler, and I believe he does long jump. Can't wait to talk uh, about that with him. And apparently he also has dreams of one day appearing on our screens as an actor. So we have lots to talk about. He is super talent, super talented, jack of, jack of all trades. Can't wait to talk to him about that. And we are admitting him, and he's going to be on right now. <clears throat> Hey. Hey, how you doing? Pretty good. How about yourself? Good, good. Caden, thanks for coming on the show tonight. Oh, yeah, no problem. Here. There he is. Right. How you doing? Yeah. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. How about yourselves? Good. We want to start off by congratulating you on getting drafted. By the BC yeah, Lions. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Can't. Oh yeah. Yeah, we. Can, I just actually ordered some BC Lions stuff, so I can't wait to be repping uh, the Lions all year. You went from one lion to another lion. Yeah, exactly. It was meant to be. <laughs> so you have quite an interesting story, as you're not just a football player, but you're also a track star, and you do bobsled too. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> So let's let's um, we want to start back into how did you get into football or tr- and track and bobsledding? Uh, like what started your uh, passion for those? Well, um, my first sport would have been track and field because my dad himself he competed for Team Canada in the decathlon at the Pan Am Games and some other um, international championships. So then he is my coach and my mom, she is athletic as well. So she taught me um, basketball, soccer, volleyball, and the other sports. So I was always wanting to do a variety of sports. And then finally, um, when I was in grade five, I started playing football and that just drove my passion there. And I was able to use my speed on the field. We're in grade seven. Then we went into full contact football and then I went into high school and started my football career there. Wow. Do you, do you feel like the track definitely helps your football career? Like I know. Oh that yeah, you, absolutely. I know that you are, you jump, you do hurdles is one of the events that you do. Uh, is it more fun to jump over those hurdles or to jump over a defensive tackle? Yeah. It's definitely more fun to jump over a moving target like a person. <laughs> yeah. yeah, definitely. That's incredible. So, Caden, um, we're new fans to the CFL, so if you could just take us through your process of your recruitment, going to New York and everything like that. Yeah, so I went to York University, and that's where I was running back and um, had such an amazing time there. And one of the reasons I chose York University was because um, when I played football for Team Canada, um, the head coach, Warren Craney, he is also the coach of York University, and then uh, receiver and offensive coach, Kamal Peterson, he is also my coach there. So I had those um, nice connections and coaches to like help me along, as well as some other athletes as well, who I played um, growing up with and with Team Canada as well. So um, they helped me and showed me the ropes, teach me skills, and then I moved on. Um, So this um, season, after this season, I was invited to the CFL National Combine, which unfortunately due to COVID, um, it didn't happen, which I was really pretty upset about because I went down to LA and I was training um, in preparation to go kill it at the combine, obviously, and um, go to show my athletic abilities and talents there. But um, I'm glad that when the CFL draft came around, 
and I was getting calls from all these other teams. It was exciting and I knew it was still on the right track and just was hopeful um, to get a good to get a good pick and be up there and get have a team um, take like use this as an opportunity. So when the BC Lions, G. Roy Simon actually, he um, gave me the call. He called me earlier in the day before the combine. And then um, before I was picked, um, he gave me the call letting me know I was going to be BC's next pick, which was ecstatic because G. Roy Simon, um, he's a CFL legend, uh, holds uh, re receiving yards in the CFL. He's a receiver. So to have him for my next team as a coach will be unbelievable. And um, to actually have a childhood hero who I remember watching um, play to give me the call, that was even more exciting. So, yeah, that was, that's been the whole draft process for me. Yeah, and it looks like you guys have improved quite a bit. Uh, BC Lions have improved quite, quite a bit from last year, as I know they just signed uh, Sean Oakman from the States, who mm -hmm. is big here. Um, and I know you signed a bunch of other people, had great drafts. What do you think us as new fans and just BC Lions fans in general should expect from the Lions once once you guys get moving forward after all of this is over and the season starts? Yeah, so this season, um, especially due to the circumstances, it's anybody's game. And I think um, the BC Lions in general, like as our team and coaching staff, we're going to prepare the best as possible and we're going to be able to be a dominating force on the field and so right now how it's looking is for there being a CFL season um, they're talking about starting September and it'll be a shortened season and whoever um, wins the most games in season will host the Grey Cup so I know the Grey Cup could definitely be hosted in Vancouver this year because we would hit the ground running I know myself and some other players we our training and getting ready for that because we were ready when the draft started before the draft. So I just can't wait to get it going. And I know this team as a whole, we have progress and we have the components and everything to go win the Grey Cup this year. For sure. We actually had um, the kicker for the BC Lions, Sergio Castillo, mm -hmm. on uh, maybe two weeks ago. And just to yep. show how prepared you guys are, even your kicker, he owns a gym and he's going hard. So you guys oh, are definitely yeah. ready. <laughs> exactly. Do. Everybody's trying to set the bar. Right. When the kicker is and the punter are, are all for it, you know that it's going to be a tough team to beat. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And you love to see that from everybody on the field, everybody on the team, to uh, yeah, have that bar and set that standard and know that we're all going after it and we're putting in that much work. Um, it makes you really excited and ready to get going. For sure, for sure. So talking a little bit about the workouts throughout this whole coronavirus situation, uh, what has it been like for you to stay prepared mentally and physically for this upcoming season? So for me, um, I since I have done – multiple sports and I'm always used to being engaged year round and always mm -hmm. like on it physically. Um, it's no problem for me. And I have access um, because over the years I've accumulated a lot of um, workout equipment too, because it's just what I love and my <laughs> passion. So then me going to the field and doing sprints, doing agility, doing conditioning, and then also um, getting, building a good base and, foundation and even building off of my athleticism that I built while in LA preparing for the combine. Um, I'm just uh, hitting milestones and growing step by step. And um, since my parents, yeah, they are athletes as well. They have some fitness equipment at home too, where I'm able to um, still have a squat rack and a bench, um, leg press, stationary bike, uh, med balls, resistance bands, hurdles, like you name it, I'm able to utilize that. I mean, I mean, we've obviously checked out your Instagram. We've seen your highlights. We know about you. Mm -hmm. You kind of, you could definitely be a stunt double for Thor if they needed it. Just, <laughs> <laughs> just based. Oh yeah. The, <laughs> just based on your Instagram, awesome. dude, but for sure, like I, we could tell that you've been staying in shape 
Um, I kind of want to go to, obviously, this was kind of your last year in university play. In 2018, you were the male athlete of the year for your work. Um, mm -hmm. I know that this year, unfortunately, uh, your teammates might not get, are probably not going to get the chance to play. What do you think of that? Yeah, it's really disheartening to have them shut down the season, especially so early. Like, um, the fall is a whole different story compared to right now. Like, you don't know what will happen in the moment when it gets there, what might change in the months. So I think it is definitely very premature to call it off, and especially, like, um, university fall sports in general to be cut off until December. And for my teammates, like, oh, like all throughout my um, university career, I've lived with um, football guys. So to hear and see like um, how their season is impacted and not being able to have a season this year, it's really disheartening. So um, we just got to know that our training and everything now, we have to build that foundation. And it is for the greater purpose, even though you won't have, uh, unfortunately, that gratification of playing the season this year you can definitely level up and evolve to get ready for the future for when those opportunities do come because they definitely will come for sure but yeah it, it does suck that this year there won't be university football in Canada which is that hasn't happened I can't even remember and do the, they don't know how um, track and field, like track and field happens in the spring, right? So they're not sure how this is going to affect track and field as well, right? Yeah, for track and, for track and field, um, the indoor season usually starts in December and um, the national championships isn't until March. So, so far, um, that season is still on for track and field wise. Um, and then also, obviously, in the summer too. But yeah, even having this summer, I, I personally, um, each summer, I like to uh, go and compete as well and do some meets. And because track and field is a great way to see and test out your athleticism, especially when it comes to your speed, it's nice to be able to hit those times or personal best and really gauge off where you are, especially um, for speed, power, and strength. So um, it's it does. It is thing that there is no track season outdoor either. Yeah. Yeah, that's throw. And I'm sure it would it would get you super prepared even for the draft and the upcoming season. Like track and football kind mm -hmm. of definitely affect one another. Yeah, for sure. So, Caden, we play a game with every one of our guests, um, and it's called Rapid Fire. Uh, we ask you a couple mm -hmm. questions, random questions. First thing off the top of your head, you uh, let us know what you think. So I'm going to start by saying, uh, is there a defensive tackle or a linebacker that you're looking forward to either hurtling over or stiff arming um, next season in the CFL? Oh, um <laughs> There would be a couple, actually, but um, uh, speaking of that, um, one of the teammates, my teammates at York University is also was drafted to the BC Lions, too, Damian Jameson, so it'll be nice to go over to the Lions with him, but uh, here, here's a personal shout-out right now, um, so Rossini Sanjong Devong, um, he was drafted to the Edmonton Eskimos right behind me, he went to York, went to LA together, but I'll tell them right now I'm going to stiff arm them, which I see a lot too. <laughs> That's great. It's, it's so funny you say or that. Or I heard a little bit. <laughs> It's so funny you say that because a lot of our guests, we ask who they would want to, you know, stiff arm, moss, tackle, sack, mm -hmm. and a lot of them say ex-teammates. <laughs> yep. Always. Yeah. <laughs> Always say ex-teammates. It's so funny. You make it a little personal, and uh, also with the, I've only ever played with them, so to play against them, like, that's a whole different beast, and it'll be fun to go against each other. Awesome. Absolutely. So, Caden, what is your favorite home-cooked meal? Mmm. Home-cooked meal. Probably, I like tacos. I like tacos a lot. 
you can do a lot with tacos, obviously. And, it is taco um, Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> It all works out. <laughs> that's probably, I'm still je- digesting that right now. So that's fine. <laughs> some good tacos. That's awesome. Kaden, do you have uh, a pump up song either when you go to a run or uh, to practice in football or during your game? Do you have like a pump up song that's like, I'm ready to run through a wall? I'm ready to do this. Mm-hmm. That would be Lil Snoop by Meek Mill. Okay. Um, that song, before races or before a game, I got to listen to that to get me going. Because nice. that song, just, it hits different. Especially it, when you're in that mindset and you're just ready to roll. Yeah, that's my go-to. Awesome. All right. So we, uh, we've noticed that you have some big screen aspirations. Oh, yeah. So who would be your favorite actor? Will Smith. Will Smith? Great mm-hmm. name. Yeah. That's a yep. awesome. That's a safe thing. <laughs> <answer. laughs> yeah. Well, all all through <laughs> Yeah, exactly. You can't you can't hit, um knock off Will. No. Will growing up, he's been a huge inspiration and everything. So yeah, go to Will Smith for sure. Do you have a specific Will Smith movie that's like your uh, favorite movie that he's in? Mm-hmm. There are so many Will Smith movies uh, that are just so good, and same with the Fresh Prince that you can throw oh, on yeah. any episode, any time yeah. of day. Uh, and um, yeah, that also got me on um, getting a Jordan collection too, because he's always rocking different Jordan. Jordans in same Fresh here. Prince as well. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. That's so, but yeah, I am Legend. I love by Will Smith. Um, great post-apocalyptic movie and yeah that's a great movie i I think that was one of his best actual like strong acting performances was in that movie like you just Mm -hmm. saw a whole new range of will smith there that's so true yeah exactly because it's mostly just solo acting too with him as a dog so for the majority of the movie absolutely yeah he's awesome um okay i have to ask you because you're a track star Potentially, we'll see you on the, the, the big screens and a football player. If you could win one of these three, which would mean more? Oh, no. Don't <laughs> do this to me. <laughs> I know. This is rough. Super Bowl, gold medal, or an Oscar? Mm. <laughs> I know. That was a tough one. Yeah. That is a tough one. Um, but I'd say Super Bowl, honestly. <laughs> Not. Because when I'm when I'm thinking about all the different um, uh, paths that can be taken, definitely NFL. That's that's the grail right there, and the Super Bowl. That's lifting up the Holy Grail. So yeah, that's, that's yeah. true. <laughs> that, that would be, that'd be amazing, incredible. Also, that would probably be the biggest audience, even on like the screen. Mm-hmm. If it'd be the biggest audience that you'd reach, no matter what, you know. Absolutely. Exactly. And yeah, you have and then go in a Super Bowl, and then after that, I can go after that Oscar. <laughs> hey, you, well, yeah, you, you can win the Super Bowl, make a movie about the team, play yourself, yeah. and win an Oscar for best leading performance. <laughs> yeah. Listen, The Rock's been doing it after winning the WWE Championship. We can't, you know. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah, he he went up to the Calgary Stampeders after he went yes. to the U. So. Very Definitely. Mm-hmm. So, you had to choose one superpower to have. What would it be? Super speed. All right. I thought you had that. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what else do you want okay, to then flight. <laughs> <laughs> I That's... guess the next thing after that would be flight. Supersonic flight. <laughs> I tell you, when I went skydiving last year and you're flying through there, you actually feel like a superhuman at that point. <laughs> oh, yeah. I got to do that. I just, oh, definitely. Yeah, definitely. skydiving would be amazing. Incredible. Greatest rush you'll ever have in your life. Oh, yeah? 
I want the wingsuit fly. Yeah. Like, it's, uh, I definitely want to do that. Oh, absolutely. It's just, it's an incredible, like, rush. Like, once you, once the plane door opens, that's it. It's like, all right, the only thing I fear now is death. No fear, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I fear nothing. It's just, I fear this thing not opening. And then once you're, like, flying, you don't care anymore. You're like, if I die, this is the greatest time to do it because this is the greatest feeling I'm ever going to have. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, it's just a full commitment. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> There's no coming it's back. truly a leap of faith. <laughs> <laughs> all right Kate, yeah, one... if you go out you're gonna go out in style <laughs> absolutely give a little like one of these on the way <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> Kaden, we got one more question for you and it's mm -hmm. what should bc lions fans and cfl fans expect from you next year a lot of touchdowns <laughs> <laughs> a lot of tough stuff. I, I, my goal, I want to be rookie of the year. Okay. Um, yeah. That, that's, I always am a person to set my heights the highest, and being rookie of the year and chasing that great cup my first year, that's definitely where my mind is at. And that's the promo. <laughs> <laughs> Just lots of touchdowns. Yeah. But – BC Lions fans, we're so lucky to have you. The CFL is so lucky to have you. Uh, I love intense players and, and players that are going to go for the gold, and that's awesome. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, that's always where my mind is at. I don't believe in limits, so I always got to reach for the stars. Absolutely. Caden, thank you so much for joining us. We can't wait to have you back on after you win the Rookie of the Year and the Grey Cup. And we mm -hmm. cannot wait for the CFL season to start. Thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Thanks, buddy. Stay safe and stay well, man. Thanks. You too. Bye, Caden. Take care, buddy. Peace. All right, what a great guy. Johnson, everybody. He's going to be fun to watch. He is. I mean, uh, I notice, like, when you have those players that also do track, like Santana Moss was a – like, he actually had a track scholarship to Miami. Those players are so fun to watch. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Super exciting. This is going to be a wonderful season. Um, so – yeah, uh, yes, and by the way, thank you for stealing my thing. I was going to say that. What? I was going to say uh, we want to have you back on the show when you win that Rookie of the Year award, and then oh, here you go. Oh, oh. <laughs> That's why I was laughing. I was just looking at you. I was like, God damn it. What am I supposed to I'll let to you do? have this one. Yeah. I'm going to steal this one. Baseball is back. you got to be excited so, about that. July 1st, spring training is going to be kicking in. The NBA is looking like it's coming back. Hockey's coming back. Ladies and gentlemen, we have sports back. Yes, we do. We can finally talk about more on the show besides, like, Tiger King and stuff. Like, we're ready to go now. We are. We are. And we had a jam have a jam-packed week of wonderful interviews with lots of CFL guys. I think the BC mm -hmm. Lions have a chance to go from worst to first next year. Ooh. You want to put five grand on that? James, I don't know what you, where you think I have five grand that I could just give it to you. Cause no, I don't. No, not give it to me. We'll split the bet. Five grand each. Again, I do not have five grand to put on. <laughs> I am not a degenerate like you who just puts money on everything. Uh, degenerate, huh? I bet Russian ping pong for three months. And exactly. All that's, that's <laughs> ex <laughs> Thank you for proving my point that you're a degenerate when it comes to that. Dude, if we could get a Chili sponsorship, by the way, I would love that. That's, that's my not, life. That's not a Chili. That's actually just my nipple. It's really oddly shaped. That wouldn't surprise me, but I know. <laughs> Don't try to trick me. I know the chili symbol. That's true. But you've also never seen my nipple, so you don't know what And you is. know what? I don't plan to, but thank you. 
don't watch my TikToks. <laughs> I don't. So, <laughs> I don't, so we're all good. All right. We will be back tomorrow. Yes, we will. With more <laughs> wonderful Nitro. interview. Super Nitro, yes. Talk about all things going on in wrestling, which is a lot. A lot, a lot. So. Yes, there is a lot going on. So. So we must discuss it. Yes. James? That's our job. Yeah. <laughs> James? Uh, are we leaving? Is that it for us? I, I think so. We've, this is the end of the interview. <laughs> All right. Stay safe. Stay well. And most importantly, stay hydrated. And